Hello, on behalf of the International Carnivorous Plant Society, I'd like to wish everyone a happy World Carnivorous Plant Day 2023. My name is Dr. Ken Cameron. I'm a professor within the Department of Botany at the University of Wisconsin in Madison, where scientists have been studying the biology and conservation of carnivorous plants for decades. One of the most interesting questions in plant biology considers origins and evolution. And modern DNA sequencing technology has completely changed our view on this subject. Of course, many people consider that carnivorous plants are so bizarre and unusual that they must have come from another planet. And this has led to Hollywood and science fiction writers coming up with all sorts of scenarios considering man-eating plants from outer space. But the truth is that carnivorous plants simply evolved here on Earth from non-carnivorous plant ancestors through the process of adaptation and natural selection. Natural selection, as you may know, is part of the theory of evolution proposed by Charles Darwin. Many people are surprised to know that Charles Darwin himself was fascinated by carnivorous plants and even wrote a book on the subject in 1875. The main carnivorous plants that Darwin was focused on were the sundews, or the genus Drosera, that grew near his home in England. These are carnivorous plants that employ a flypaper trapping mechanism. But flypaper traps are only one of several different syndromes or mechanisms by which carnivorous plants lure, trap, and digest their prey. For example, there are also suction traps, carnivorous plants that use lobster pots or snap traps, or even pitfall traps. Let's consider the flypaper trap syndrome for just a moment. I mentioned that it's present in Drosera, the sundews, those are found worldwide, a very large genus. Another large genus are the butterworts, or pinguicula. But there are smaller groups of carnivorous plants that employ flypaper trapping mechanisms, such as Biblis in Africa or Drosophyllum in southern Europe. Quite recently, a new carnivorous plant lineage was discovered. This is called Triantha and it also uses sticky inflorescence traps, a type of flypaper. The pitfall traps are more commonly referred to as pitcher plants. And you may be familiar with these as members of the family Saraceniaceae. For example, Saracenia from Eastern North America, Darlingtonia from Western North America, and then Heliamphora, the sun pitchers from South America. But there are also pitcher plants using pitfall mechanism in tropical Southeast Asia, the genus Nepenthes, for example, Cephalotis, found only in Western Australia, and then the very unusual bromeliad from the tepuis of South America called Brokinia. Suction traps and lobster pot traps are lesser known. The suction traps belong to bladderworts in the genus Utricularia. They're almost like little underwater vacuums. This is what they look like. And then finally, what some people consider to be the most remarkable of all the carnivorous plants are those that employ a snap trap. This is best represented by Venus's flytrap or Dionea muscipula found only in the Carolinas of southeastern North America. Together, all of these different syndromes, flypaper traps, suction traps, lobster pots, pitfalls, and snap traps, have evolved a way of obtaining their nutrients from digestion of insect prey. So how many times did carnivory evolve among plants? Was it just one branch of the tree of life? Did carnivores evolve independently two, three, or more times across the plant kingdom? To get at this question, which scientists have been asking for centuries, Albert Williams and Chase used DNA for the first time and published their results in Science Magazine 
to show that multiple different lineages of the plant kingdom have evolved carnivory. But in some lineages, we find a combination of multiple trapping mechanisms. So how then can it be that pitcher plants, for example, that all look so similar to one another, and you would assume had evolved simply once from a common ancestor, actually evolved multiple times independently? The answer to that question is best explained by the phenomenon known as convergent evolution. We see this across life and might be most easily understood if we look at aquatic animals, for example. Here on this slide are a variety of different animals, all adapted perfectly to their underwater existence. And they really look similar, don't they? They essentially lack arms and legs and instead have fins and tails and torpedo-shaped bodies. They represent cartilaginous fish, bony fish, reptiles, mammals, amphibians, and even birds. They've all evolved this morphology, this appearance, by convergent evolution. And the same is true with carnivorous plants. Now, a moment ago, I told you that many biologists consider snap traps to be the most remarkable, Venus's flytrap. But I failed to show you photographs of one remarkable carnivorous plant that uses snap traps as well. This is the water wheel, or Aldrovanda vesiculosa. It's an aquatic plant living underwater, but functions very much like a Venus's flytrap. For this reason, biologists have assumed that it must be closely related to Dionea, to the Venus's flytrap. But others have said no, it actually has flowers or floral morphology more similar to Drosera. And yet other biologists have suggested that the underwater habitat is similar to Utricularia and they may be more closely related to each other. So when we think about Venus's flytrap and water wheels, both having snap traps, could they really be related to each other and evolved from a common ancestor? I mean, after all, they're found in completely different parts of the world. On the other hand, this is an ancient group and it has a fossil record. We have seeds of Aldrovanda going back hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years. There's even a genus called Paleo Aldrovanda that's been dated at 65 million years old. So when morphologists compared Aldrovanda to a ver with a variety of characters to the two closest possibilities, Dionea and Drosera, they found a mixture. In some cases, Aldrovanda has features more in common with Dionea, Venus's flytrap, but in other cases, it seems to be much more similar to Drosera. Is it related to Dionea? Is it related to Drosera? Or maybe to Utricularia, the underwater bladderworts, or some completely different plant lineage? By taking a scientific approach that focused on morphology of these plants, Williams, Albert, and Chase in 1994 concluded that Aldrovanda occupies a position in the family tree of plants that's somewhat intermediate between sundews, Drosera, and Venus's flytrap, Dionea. If this is true, then it has implications for the origin of snap traps. There are two equally plausible scenarios. On the left, we could see that the ancestor of these plants had flypaper traps marked by the green star, and that it evolved snap traps twice independently, once in Dionea and once in Aldrovanda. Scenario two also involves two steps. Flypaper traps represent the ancestral condition, the green star. They evolved snap traps once and then re-evolved flypaper traps a second time. To get at this perplexing question, two competing hypotheses of the origin of snap traps, we later turned to DNA analysis or genetics. 
These genetic analyses can be used to reconstruct evolutionary patterns, something like building a family tree, and then ultimately translated into classification systems. The technique is fairly straightforward nowadays. We extract DNA mostly from leaf tissue, and then within the cells of the leaves, DNA is sequenced from one of three genomes, the nucleus, the chloroplast, or the mitochondria. What we're looking for are changes in nucleotides, abbreviated A, T, G, or C, which make up genes in the genome of the DNA, the blueprint of life. For example, here are four hypothetical plant species, one, two, three, four. A small fragment of DNA, a gene, has been sequenced and aligned, and we see that mostly the genetic material is identical between one, two, three, and four. But there are some mutations at position seven, 19, 20, and 26. And this genetic information analyzed by computers can reconstruct the genetic relationships or the evolutionary history of these species. I did this for Aldrovanda, Venus's flytrap, and a number of different carnivores back in 2002 and published those results in the American Journal of Botany. I was really pleased by the number of journalists who took an interest in this study. It was profiled in newspapers, magazines, even on the radio around the world, which I think says a lot about the popularity of carnivorous plants and people's fascination with them. What my colleagues and I found by sequencing one gene from the nucleus and three genes from the chloroplast genome are that a number of carnivorous plants are closely related, but Aldrovanda and Dionea are each other's closest relatives. Marked by the red star, we see a single origin for snap traps. Furthermore, we were able to show that the ancestor of this group had flypaper traps marked in green. One group lost its carnivorous abilities and another, Nepenthes, evolved pitfall traps. So in terms of Aldrovanda, we now know based on genetic evidence that its closest living relative is Dionea, the Venus's flytrap. This means that the ancestor of Venus's flytrap in Aldrovanda had flypaper traps, and that fast action snap traps evolved only once from those flypaper ancestors. How many times did carnivory evolve among plants? Many. We see flypaper traps having evolved four or five different times, pitfall traps, pitcher plants evolving three, four times, but those remarkable snap trapping carnivores evolved only once, resulting in Dionea, now restricted to southeastern United States, and Aldrovanda found in the Old World. But before I conclude, I'd just like to remind you that we all need to do our part to help to protect and conserve these carnivorous plants, which are mostly protected by CITES, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species. As you know, many of them are under threat from poaching, but also loss of habitat. And it's sad to consider that historical populations of Aldrovanda in Europe, Africa, and India are now extinct, whereas they were once known from the historical record. What can you do to help? Well, first of all, only buy carnivorous plants from reputable nurseries. But secondly, why not join the International Carnivorous Plant Society? You can learn more about these remarkable plants and their cultivation, but you can also help to support their work in conserving wild habitat and promoting research. Finally, I'd just like to say thank you and happy World Carnivorous Plant Day. It's not a surprise that gardeners, educators, and scientists are fascinated by these unique plants. The International Carnivorous Plant Society, or ICPS, not only love these plants, but welcomes growers just getting started all the way through professional scientists. 
The ICPS even started an annual World Carnivorous Plant Day to celebrate them. The free online event is held the first Wednesday of May. Take a look around our website and you'll find historic documents about carnivorous plants, growing guides, free educational resources, and more. Have questions? Ask. We don't bite, but our plants do.